No, seriously, sit up. So we're rolling there. <laughs> I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today at DevOx interviewing Jim Weaver. Hi, Hi Jim. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit what you do. What do I do? Like yeah. professionally? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'm a Java evangelist, yeah. um, kind of borrowing a religious term, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I like to call myself a Java technology activist, actually. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my favorite title because um, I'm very passionate about uh, rich client Java, and so I joined Oracle uh, after doing that in the community, being an advocate for rich client Java and Java FX. I joined Oracle in April, and now I'm doing that as my day job. Okay, do you like it so far? I love it. I love working for Oracle, and, Good. and uh, I love being able to do some of my favorite things, which is to uh, work with the Java community, work with the greatest people in the world, and, um, and I get to travel. Uh, for example, here I am in Antwerp and uh, interfacing with uh, some, some great people all over the world. And I get to play with great toys and, and, uh, and technology. So, so yeah, I really do like my job. So you've been working on JavaFX. So tell us a little bit what's new since last year. Uh, what's new since last year on JavaFX? A lot of things are new, actually. Um, version 2.2 came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a lot of nice features to it that, that have been added. One, one really nice thing is that it's been, it's, uh, it's been ported to Mac OS. So now it's um, uh, on uh, Linux, mm -hmm. Mac OS X, of course, Windows. Um, also, there's an embedded uh, JavaFX um, available. It's, it's, it's Java ARM, uh, but JavaFX libraries available for those things. So like, for example, on the Beagle board. So you can begin experimenting with JavaFX on, on embedded. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some other things. Gosh, uh, WebView is a really nice thing where, um, where a lot of times developers have wondered, especially with all the buzz about HTML5, um, do I use HTML5 or do I use JavaFX? And the answer really is, you don't have to make a decision because those two play very well together. Mm. And so one of the nice things about the new things in JavaFX is this web view control, which is a WebKit port, which then allows you to, uh, to, do, uh, to leverage the best of both worlds, HTML5 and JavaFX, rich client Java, and then talk between them, between Java and JavaScript and back. So that's another really nice thing about uh, a really nice new thing. Another really nice thing is that, that Java has had this issue over the years with deployment, both deploying the platform itself, the, the, the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment, but also in deploying Java applications. So one of the nice features about uh, in, the, in the new versions of JavaFX is this idea of self-contained applications to where a developer can create very easily a native package that has a native installer that then installs, including the runtime, the, the, the run version of the runtime that they want on the user's machine. And, uh, and at Java 1, for example, uh, we demonstrated that uh, one of the showcase JavaFX applications is actually in the in the Mac App Store. So this idea of being able to 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 create native installers so that the users can have the experience of just clicking and, and going through a normal install process of the application uh, makes it very deterministic and easy for the user. So that's another new thing that's that's an exciting feature. So what kind of tool can uh, developers use or uh, designers? Really, any any kind of tools they want. Uh, mm -hmm. The ones that are kind of by default when you go to the Oracle website to download JavaFX and Java uh, is NetBeans. But other tools, if, you, if your favorite tool is Eclipse, for example, um, a gentleman by the name of Tom Schindel has an open source project called EFX Eclipse in which uh, he has plugins that, that have very good support for JavaFX. Also, you can use, many uh, developers use IntelliJ. You could use uh, JDeveloper from Oracle. Uh, lots of different tools you can use for, um, you just use your favorite IDE. And you have also, like, uh, what kind of tools do you have for designers? Uh, just any kind of design tools that you'd like for vector graphics or, 
or um, uh, you know, uh, bitmap graphics, those kinds of things for the graphical world. Also, we have a tool called um, Scene Builder, which provides a drag and drop interface where if you don't want to code the, the UI by hand, express it in code, mm -hmm. we have something called Scene Builder where you can drag and drop uh, user interface components into a scene. And then you can hook those things up into um, the code to where when you click a button on the scene, for example, it's going to invoke the code that's in your NetBeans project. So uh, that's a very powerful paradigm, something that's easy for, for developers to use. And underlying that, I'll just you know uh, mention another buzzword, I guess. It's called FXML. Underlying that, the scene builder is actually kind of a visual editor, but the underlying data is, a, is an XML dialect called FXML. So at runtime, your application brings in that FXML, which expresses the, the, your scene graph, if you will, and then you know, displays it, and then you can interact with it. So that's another tool. It's a designer tool that you can use. So who is using uh, JavaFX today? Uh, you know, we, we see the adoption in, um, in several areas. One of the, uh, the biggest areas we see adoption in is those that already have existing swing applications. And JavaFX is really the, the next step after swing. So it's, it's the swing successor. So there's a lo there are a lot of companies and people that have built swing applications. And those are, those are the rich client Java uh, people, right? So um, JavaFX is the next generation library for for UI. So one of the one of the patterns that we're seeing is that a lot of them are migrating piece by piece, or or sometimes wholesale, the applications their swing applications into JavaFX. One of the features of JavaFX is com something called JFX Panel that you can use in a swing application and then put JavaFX nodes in there so you don't have to eat the proverbial elephant all at once. So you had a demo today about this 3D uh, animation? Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. which company is that? Well, that was uh, a company called, a couple of companies involved with that. Um, there's a company called Canoe, which is a software development company that uh, specializes in all sorts of kinds of really nice development. Very great company. And one of the technologies that that they um, have really been focusing on is JavaFX. So they have a customer called Navis, which is a container tracking um, shipping company. Mm -hmm. And so the demo, one of the demos that we saw today, was an application where they manage uh, their, this JavaFX application helps them manage uh, their shipments but in addition it shows 2D and 3D views of their, their shipyards including the containers on there and it's very interactive to where you can drill down into a container and see what's on board and, and all sorts of business logic um, surrounding that so that you can really get a good handle on what what's in the yard in a 3D manner. Wonderful. And it's, a, it's also a real-life uh, data stream as uh, well, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. It's really yes. impressive. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us, so you have a, now a community, right? It is yeah. called the Java FX community? It's called Java FX community, javafxcommunity.com. And what it is, it's a site that's on java.net. And we've just, we gave it a, a, a URL that redirects to, the, to that you know, to a, a more complicated URL. So just remember it by javafxcommunity.com. And what we've tried to do is kind of aggregate and provide a common place where JavaFX developers can find resources. So one of the areas is on the left of that uh, site is a set of links where they can download Java, you know, maybe new versions of Java like Java 8 and, and the JDK. Um, they can find real-world examples, like like I was talking about, like with this Navis and others, like Mint and uh, Seller Technologies. There, there are some links to to those adoption stories, um, links to the API, things things like that. But then on the right, <coughs> we have 
um, an aggregated blog feed to where people that are blogging about JavaFX, you can see over on the right, though, the, the latest posts. And so you can get kind of an up-in-a-minute um, uh, glimpse of what real JavaFX developers are doing and blogging about and then learn from the projects that they're working on. Also, there's a Twitter feed that, that has the, the hashtag JavaFX. So you can kind of at one glance see what's going on in the Java community. And then, you know, it's a good uh, place to kind of starting point to kind of d dive into uh, resources you might want to have. So how can uh, developers get involved uh, today? I mean, is there something from that community page that they could also uh, see yeah. too? Yeah, absolutely. One of the best ways for developers to get involved would be to go to that page, download the, the SDK, the, you know, the, the Java Developer Kit, which comes with, uh, you know, the JDK 7 comes with JavaFX, so it's not this other thing that you have to install. If you've got Java 7, you've got JavaFX already. Mm -hmm. But then there, um, they could download then, you know, NetBeans. They could download some of the samples so they can learn from samples. For example, there's an application called an Ensemble, which is one of the samples in um, in the download package, where um, the Ensemble application then has an example of all the different types of things that are in JavaFX, like the controls, or maybe some, or, or a lot of the animation objects, and uh, graphical objects, charts, techniques. It's all um, very accessible to the developer in this one application. So they can, they can click on, on one of the techniques, see it in action, and then see the associated code and then copy it into their project. So a good way to get involved would be to, you know, download it, download some tools, download some examples, and just play with it. Wonderful. Yeah, play and is good. Yes, it's good. So, and uh, it was announced at Java 1 that uh, JavaFX would be open source. Can you talk a little bit about it? Right, yeah, JavaFX is in the process of being open source. And so um, early next year, early in 2013, uh, the plan is to, uh, as we progressively uh, put things out in open source, and that's been happening o over the, the course of the last several months, um, so, that <coughs> so then that we can um, encourage more participation from the community in building out, you know, porting JavaFX and, and supplying um, uh, improvements to JavaFX. Also, there, there are projects. There's, there's one open source project called JF Extras, which is one that um, has a lab to where folks like uh, Garrett Grunewald and others are adding, to, adding really nice controls to that, that that will then someday, could then potentially someday be uh, destined for uh, the mainline uh, Open JDK or Open JFX project. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much You're for all this um, uh, information and news. Yeah. It's, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.